how many times have you started building in Minecraft in the same fantasy medieval build style? Now don't get me wrong, that is a beautiful build style to build in. I myself have absolutely loved building in that style. But sometimes you just crave something different. If this sounds like you, stick around while I expand my hardcore world with a rammed earth architectural build surrounding a brand new iron farm. But before we can even remotely begin our iron farm, we are going to need to gather a whole lot of materials. And to get some of these materials, we are going to be having to do a whole lot of prep work. These trees are going to have to go away. We're going to have to build a larger wheat farm somewhere. Guys, it's going to get busy. For our new wheat farm, I think back here is going to be the perfect place. Obviously, we have our barn, which is beautiful and lovely. But we do have this nice sloping area that would be perfect for some more wheat. Plus, the wheat is going to take the longer thing to grow up, and it can be growing while we're actually tearing down all those trees over there. But that means that we're going to need an infinite supply of water. Where should I put this infinite supply of water? That is not going to be in the way of my wheat farm, but still close enough that I don't have to constantly run around. You know what? Let's just put it right here. Beautiful. Oh, and we're going to need a hoe, and I don't think I ever made a diamond hoe, uh, which is kind of sad. So, let's see. We need two diamonds, please and thank you. And we need to go here, here, and there. We now have a hoe. Beautiful. But I do want to enchant it. Now, we only have 24 levels, so the possibilities of enchanting things, not going to be great. Fortune 2. Guys, that could actually be really good. Okay, we're getting the rest of the levels. <laughs> 30 levels, and that means we can get for ourselves a lovely hoe of Fortune 2, Efficiency 4 on Breaking 3. Let's go! Okay, I also would like to take one of our mending books and put that on as well, because that will help us in all of the hoeing that we're going to have to do. And now we are ready to get busy working on uh, this lovely wheat field. I don't know how big it's gonna be, but I know we need a lot because we need we need packed mud and mud bricks for our build today. So yeah, we need a whole lot of wheat. I'd say this is a pretty decent size of a wheat field for our needs, hopefully. Fingers crossed I did it large enough. I didn't want to bring it all the way back here because I'm thinking we might continue this path, maybe have a few other buildings back here. Now while we wait for all of this to grow up so I can finish planting the rest with the seeds, we are going to take some time and chop down these trees. The build that we are building today is going to be kind of really right amongst all of this, uh, just kind of back in there. And some of these trees are in the way. Plus, I have to admit, having all of these trees right here in front of our house is a pretty decent eyesore. And I want things to look pretty around here and these trees are not helping. This is looking a whole lot clearer without any of the trees here. However, I have left the acacia here because that is one of the woods that we're going to need quite a bit of and I had none. But this is looking good and now we can actually get into gathering the rest of the resources that we're going to need for the build. We are going to have to collect a whole bunch of spruce wood, of course the acacia wood, We'll need to get a bunch of mud and terracotta and even some brown mushroom blocks, which now that I think about it, we don't actually have silk touch on this ax. And it would be really nice to be able to use an ax to actually cut down the brown mushrooms. So let's see what we can do about getting some silk touch onto this ax. And then we will head off and get all of the resources that we need away from base. That might be it. Let me go and get a whole bunch of levels so that we can find out. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, guys, that's fortune three efficiency four. 
Oh, let's try this again. What do we got here? Oh my goodness. Still, Fortune 3. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. This is not going to plan. But we have just enough levels that we can try this one more time, please. Silk touch. No, just on breaking three, of course. Uh, this is going to take a lot longer than I expected it to. So I'll bring you guys back when we got silk touch finally. Well, my friends, unfortunately, I have gone so many times to try and get the levels to get a silk touch and it's just not happening. And at this point, it has been entirely too long of me re-rolling the enchanting table to try and get Silk Touch. So we're going to just have to use our pickaxe, which is so much slower. But you know what? I think we only need like four stacks of brown mushroom blocks. So we'll just do it that way. However, I did get a Feather Falling 4 book, which would be absolutely amazing for our boots, which currently I definitely do not have that on. So we are just gonna quickly put this on and now I feel so much better about building way up high, so much safer. Now, how about a fun little resource gathering montage? Well, my friends, I do think that we have all of the resources we're going to need for the main part of this build, and I can't wait to show you guys what it's going to look like. So I hope you like time lapses because we're about to embark on a beautiful journey together of watching this build come to life. My friends, I am so happy to see this beautiful iron farm all here in our hardcore world. Thank you, Rain. Thank you. Yeah, it's very helpful for showing off this build. But oh my goodness, what do you guys think? I think it is such a cool new architectural style to try out with this rammed earth. It's beautiful. One tip I do have if you're going to try this out yourself. If you look up pictures of the ramped earth architectural style, you might feel like it's a little bit flat, especially if you recreate it one to one here in a Minecraft world. And so this is why I made a little bit of changes to it to add in a little bit more depth and get rid of that flatness. So that means I added in these upside down stairs here on the side to kind of make a little bit of a foundation and added some leaves in here as well. And of course, these lovely mud brick walls and of course the spruce fences. I don't know. It just added a little bit more depth than just having flat walls. Now, of course, we are not done with this build. There is a little bit more work that we need to do, mainly um, the interior. It's lacking a certain very important farm, you know, the iron farm that's supposed to be in here. I am using Logical Geek Boy's iron farm design, which I've used before, and I'm going to get to building it here shortly. So this hole right here is simply because where the villagers will be standing, uh, they needed a little bit extra space down bottom, otherwise we were gonna have golems spawn in and the chance of them actually jumping off of their beds. So that is why we got the hole right there. This is where our zombie is going to stand, but it does mean that we're going to have a little problems about making sure this place is spawn proof. So this is the reason why I actually built this building ahead of time versus building the iron farm first. But it also means that we need to do a little bit more spawn proofing around the build itself. And I was really hoping I would have uh, moss carpets 
but I, I don't have very many and we have like no bone meal. So I need to go see what I can do about that to make sure that the side and the back of this build are spawn proofed. Speaking of which, it's desperately nighttime out there and I should really go to sleep. But enough chattering, I think it's time we get busy building up this iron farm. Okay guys, it's built up now and now we have to get busy and figure out how to fill it with the things it needs to be filled with. So that means we are going to need a zombie in here and of course we are going to need three villagers. Which, I honestly don't know which one I'm scared about getting in the most, if it's going to be the villagers or the zombie. But I do know I will be putting the zombie in first because at least we can hide him away from the villagers and not spawn any golems. Yes, that was so easy, guys. My villager breeding seems to have produced an iron golem. Not exactly the greatest thing, but I guess for a time he can hang out and hopefully he protects me and doesn't attack me at some point, you know? Well, irregardless, we finally have three baby villagers that we just have to wait to grow up and I have made an iron rail fence all the way out to where we need to put these villagers out into the iron farm. So hopefully this goes smooth sailing, but hey, we're working with mobs, guys. Nothing goes smooth when we're working with mobs. Oh my gosh, they're breeding even more, guys. I know this one's in my house. What am I gonna do? Okay, my friends, I think we finally have them all into their spaces that they need to go. Uh, not too much difficulties. And now it's just a matter of making sure everything is broken down so we don't get improper spawns of golems. Okay, all of that is back. We are going to need our door back in here. I have forgotten that I lost a leaf right there, so I'm gonna quickly go and grab one because otherwise I think that's spawnable. And being in hardcore and having this so uh, nighttime, slightly terrifying. <laughs> We're hoping that I did all the spawn proofing properly here. Okay, now we need to break down all of this and grab for ourselves our shovel. Oh gosh, guys, I really hope I did this right. Villagers are in their beds. I have all of that done. I'm just gonna go and free cam for a second here and make sure all of this seems all right. I think that's all right and proper. On the top, we have trap doors and fences all the way around. And I think, oh, I ran out guys. They're gonna spawn in here. So we're gonna have to go get some more carpet, which means, yeah, I'm gonna sleep and hope that everything's okay over there and that they'll stay on their beds. Uh, and we'll start the iron farm uh, next night time once I get the rest of that spawn proofed. Uh, let's go and try and grab for ourselves a whole bunch more wool, hopefully, so I can finish off the spawn proofing back there. Because look at these golems. I have so many around my base and I don't like it. Okay, a little bit more wool. I might have to get rid of these golems, guys. I don't know if it's going to impact my iron farm at all. I don't have enough. I need one more, one more harvest of wool to finish that off. Okay, I'm gonna bring you guys back once I finally have uh, everything spawn proof to the best of my ability. Uh, and then we're gonna see if I actually am going to be able to have that work for us. I do believe we are now good. I think everything is spawn proof to the best of my ability and we should only get iron golems up there. Now my only thought is potentially the villagers that I have over there are connected to the same village and if we have those iron golems over there we might have issues spawning in more. But I guess the only way to test that is if we actually start this farm up. 
So, um, oh gosh, let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, just like that, we did get a golem. Okay, beautiful. Uh, I'm just gonna watch for a little bit, just see if we continue getting them in the same place all the time and that they actually keep spawning there and don't happen to spawn elsewhere. Otherwise, we're gonna have so many problems. I don't wanna have to get another zombie. So far, so good. That's two. And there's three. Guys, I think we've done it. I really do think we've done it. I think we are going to only get golems now in the farm up top and nowhere else, which is absolutely amazing. Let's go for all the iron we could ever hope or need for. Well, after leaving the farm running for about 20 minutes while I edit it a little bit, look at this, guys. We have so much iron coming in. This is going to be so wonderful uh, for me in this world. I mean, I am just by myself. It doesn't need to be crazy rates, but those are great rates. Absolutely great rates for us, guys. I am not complaining at all. What an incredible job of building in this new build style, guys. I'm sorry, I'm tooting my own horn here, but I absolutely love how this has come out and I'm really excited to add even more buildings around here with the same theme and style. Now, of course, the interior of this build is not complete because look at this side, there is absolutely nothing in it. And it desperately needs a little bit of decorations or maybe even another farm. However, that is going to have to come in the next episode. Guys, I really hope you did enjoy today's episode where I challenged myself to build in a different build style. I would love to hear if you have ever tried challenging yourself to build in a different style than you normally would and what were the results. Leave all of those lovely thoughts down in the comments below and I will catch you in my next video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. And of course, like this video if you did. Until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye for now.